Welcome to Still Plays Galaxy Videos. We're back with a talk video for the latest marquee character, Skiffguard Lando, who we're calling Tamtel Screech from now on because Skiffguard has too many of those back of the mouth consonants that gets annoying to say. Breaking down things as we do, kit analysis, just looking at the key mechanics so we don't get bogged down and distracted with it. everything else going on so we can simplify our understanding speculate on some synergies there's a little bit more going on with the squad now where we can start to project and think about what could be happening developer insights we'll take a glance and then wrap up with the free-to-play gearing of my roster with screech lando we get an attacker with hot cartel scoundrel and notably a smuggler tag. Sometimes I start with unique on these, and even though there is some reason to do that here, for whatever reason, I feel like doing this one in order. The basic double dealer. This is a nice little ability here. What we get is a physical damage to the target. Lando gains a stack of deep cover, maxes out at five. Deep cover is plus 10% penetration and potency. So the mechanics of deep cover are important, but it comes in clear with the mechanics of the unique, so we will come back to this ability. I'm assuming the potency and defense penetration stacks. I wish CG could be a little clearer because later in the kit they refer to stacking effects, they don't refer to it here, but it makes sense with how uh, other parts of the kit works. So the part I'm interested in here with the mechanics of deep cover is why potency? Because there is not a lot of need for potency on Lando as a part of the kit. So the implications are interesting and we will return to this throughout the kit and also when we get to synergies. With the first special cutter vibro axe as a cooldown of three, this is physical damage to the target, gains 10% defense penetration and 20% offense per stack of deep cover. If Screech has five stacks of deep cover, inflict the target with two damage over times and armor shred, and there's a 50% chance to have cooldown of Vibro Axe refreshed. Every incentive to wait to use this ability to maximize its impact to ensure that you get armor shred, which should, with the cooldown, also be ready to go multiple times if you get the right RNG and get that cooldown refresh. Potentially could be very strong and devastating, but I think you're going to want to pick your moments with it. The second special covert coordination cooldown of three with a Zeta. This is cleanse the target ally. Really wish CG would use my verbiage. So cleanse that target ally, grant stacks of deep cover to that target, equal to the stacks on Screech. If the target ally is Hut Cartel, then they will gain retribution and speed up. If that target is also a light side ally, they will gain potency up and stealth call that target to assist and grant them a bonus turn. So there's a lot of nice things going on with this ability. It's definitely made for future use, almost nearly guaranteed to be a Bosch Leia, but right now we can give it to Chrysanthemum for fun or some of the other Hut Cartel members. Being able to grant deep cover means we can grant its effects. So presumably someone else will be benefiting from the increased potential potency, uh, but giving defense penetration and retribution to Kersantin will be desirable as well. We'll, we'll rehash all this in synergies. The unique ability agent on the inside, this is an Omicron. There's two parts here, the unique itself and then the granted component. We'll take both separately. Screech will have plus 15% defense penetration. Allies with stacks of deep cover have plus 15% defense penetration and plus 30% potency. At the start of his turn, Screech gains a stack of deep cover. And if all allies were Hut Cartel, 
at the start of the battle, Screech gains five stacks of deep cover. And while he has five stacks of deep cover, he gains the granted ability Hut's Favor. So there will be no reason to run Screech without the Hut Cartel. He just won't function the way he needs to. And this unique is why it's all about Hut's Favor. And getting those five stacks of deep cover also means that you can be using that first special we were talking about on the first turn but even though you will have the option to land that armor shred i think you're going to want to hold off so this granted ability huts favor physical damage to the target and consume all stacks of deep cover on screens this attack deals three percent of the target enemy's max health per debuff on them, and Screech gains a stack of Trusted Agent. And that's the important part here, Trusted Agent stacks. Trusted Agent plus 30% defense penetration and offense at one or more stacks. Attack again while performing a basic attack. That is gonna be pretty huge. So he builds momentum as the battle goes along. You'll be able to use Hut's Favor immediately at the start of an encounter if everyone is Hut Cartel. It will be the first move you want to make in order to get that trusted agent ball rolling, but you'll want Screech to go after the debuffs land. Trusted agent means more stacks of deep cover faster because he'll be double tapping and getting two stacks of deep cover instead of one every time he uses his basic. So returning to Hut's favor faster and getting more stacks of deep cover and then as a consequence, trusted agent in turn. This should be prioritized. I might even do this over the special abilities. On top of that, assist calls are going to be desirable to drive more stacks of deep cover on Lando. Be on the lookout for future hut cartel to help drive that assist call you'll most likely want to use it maybe that'll be boss leia maybe that'll be java maybe that will be someone else forthcoming the end result of how valuable all of this will be is all going to depend on how good of an attacker that screech lando turns out to be i'm confident he's going to be pretty good but it's going to need to be revealed and maybe some of that comes through like shared unique stats that Leia might be bringing or Java might be bringing. So we might not see all of those mechanics working as intended in the early testing. A lot of uniques are very powerful these days and really elevating squads to functionality. So right now there isn't a strong or functional group of Hut Cartel characters to truly test any of this, but we'll have some fun with it. We skipped over the Omicron. We should at least acknowledge it. It is a territory war Omicron. And in terms of an Omicron, there's just nothing to really even say about it. Some extra stats. Uh, maybe once Jabba is in the game, we can have an idea. They did mention adding Jabba nodes to both light side and dark side territory battles we'll have to see if they incentivize that in some way to make it worth it even if you have the money to burn on things like this you should be waiting just see what happens with these nodes maybe it's more than just currency and then it might be worth some consideration synergies and just like with chrysanthemum these synergies don't mean much right now but what we are beginning to see is some of the potential of the Hut Cartel synergy where we can start envisioning the framework and shape of how the squad could function. Lando will already make Kersantan a little better since we can give Kersantan deep cover, which means he can be getting that defense penetration, a little extra potency, and he will get retribution. What that retribution means is he's going to be countering and using his own basic, which means when he has a full squad of Hut Cartel, he goes from a 10% chance of landing shock to a 100% chance of landing shock if he wins that tenacity check. I believe that it's, it's not going to be unresistable, but he will inflict shock. 
The second special covert coordination makes it pretty clear Bosch Leia is on the way. That and the mechanics of deep cover, particularly the potency mechanic, which right now doesn't currently have much of a use. Otherwise, like who are those for? Which makes that speculation in my Java predictions video a bit more of a success. But because I didn't really like the costume, I left Screech Lando off of that list, which was a foolish mistake. I was hoping to manifest what I wanted instead of observing what was likely to happen. Now I'm just kicking myself for living, leaving him off my own list because of my own biases. With the developer insights, we always take a look at these, but a lot of it, like I wish they didn't give the game away on this. They, they echo a lot of what I already said through my reading of the kit. And then some of the rest of this just feels like a justification for why he has the tags that he has. I don't have an issue with that. The one thing they do mention here though, granted ability, Hut's favor, dealing damage based around Lando's max health. Uh, and then they're recommending critical chance and offense mods or offense and health mods. That's all gonna depend on how those stats lay out. I think the offense and health makes more sense, if not health completely, but probably offense and health. I, I'm gonna have to see some more of the specifics on that. Uh, the other thing that they do explain here is that there's going to be a total of three marquees for Java, so there's one more on the way and Relic 5 is what he is going to be required for, which is nice to know, but I bet by the time this video is either posted or by the time uh, we get the update in the game, the update is going to give us that next set of requirements, which will probably, which will indicate that Relic 5 Lando with whoever else is going to be on there. Now for our usual wrap up, the free to play gearing of my roster. This is the gearing that I did on August 1st before that round of 3v3, whichever round that was. The big thing that I did here is I have now shifted fully into a heavy pursuit towards my goals of Grand Inquisitor and Profundity, both of those as soon as possible. Profundity is gonna be limited by Admiratus farming, so I imagine I'm gonna have that second time around. Grand Inquisitor I'm gonna have whenever he shows up. I've unleashed the full power of my war chest. All my hoarded crystals, all my hoarded currencies, everything is going towards that. And so I can get Sith Eternal Emperor as soon as possible, immediately after unlocking those first two goals and milestones. I had 200k in currency for Galactic War, Fleet Currency, Squadrina Currency. That is currently all being converted into Shard Shop Currency and buying anything and everything. I'm going to show you where some of that looked at that August 1st period. This is where things looked at that point. So those are the projects and where they stand at this particular point. Here is where my gear hoard looked at the beginning of August 1st. You can see anything in red is things that are big priorities that I need to achieve uh, in order to get to qualify for Grand Inquisitor. If it's just bolded, then I have the minimums that I need. I, I've been going into this on the Discord a lot, but that, that gives you a glance of how far off I am at the start of August. With this Grand Arena, I took a number of good characters up to Relic 7 so that my counters will function and work. Because a lot of the teams that I'm trying to use for like array cleanup in the Starkiller case, or trying to be characters like Lord Vader, Fennec, not having those characters where I need them to be able to counter with those characters is a problem for me. I'm trying to solve those problems. And then I slice a few mods and you, see, you can see for the most part I got pretty lucky, but I'm also very careful about what I turn into six dot mods and slice. Like I, they're already good mods if I have brought them to six dot or started slicing. Like I only need to hit speed once or twice in order for it to become a 
20, 25 plus mod is what I'm looking for. So Fennec, same deal. I already gave you the explanation why. Take her up to Relic 7. A lot of these characters are probably going to be brought up to Relic 8. But right now, again, hoarding currency, Relic materials, whatever for those other goals. So these characters, this is like their last moment in the sun to get a little attention for the time being. But also improving the mods here. wanted some better secondaries because if I was going to slice it up to six dot I wasn't just going to slice any six dot speeder I wanted one with secondaries that made sense don't get lucky on that mod we're not doing full modding or anything there's just a few key characters I took a look at but really if it's like below plus 16 I'm probably not turning into a six dot mod And then as we move on, what do we look at next? So most of these, I'm at a point where I'm not gonna be gearing too many additional characters outside of those other requirements. So Wampa here, same deal, Relic 7, just to make him a more successful cleanup, make sure he can counter C teams, even though I ended up not seeing any of those. Melgus, we did a week of gear 11 testing. I asked the community on a YouTube poll if they were interested in a gear 11 2 ami test or if we did a gear 12 one ami gear 12 2 ami the gear 12 2 ami is what won that pull and i kind of agreed with it so i went with it we'll be doing in 5v5 we will be looking at his performance uh, at gear 12 2 ami Adding a few of these left side pieces. I think we do all of them, right? Just get those extra stats. That's an easy and cheap one. Really that armor tech was the only one that had some pieces I care about. But we've got good counts on all of those. Lob and Force are taking her up with any of the pieces that I have a lot of. So that's stun cuffs, whatever. Like Nubian scanners are no longer a concern of mine. We do have a decent amount of carbs, but we go through them pretty quick. So I'm going to hold off on those carbs and not add another gear level there. Plus, we don't know if she's going to be required. I think it's a safe bet, but it is still an unknown. I don't even remember if I did this. Just looking at those profundity requirements, see if... Or I don't even remember if Cassian is one. And we wrap it up there. Videos to check out, I did a Ben Solo gearing assessment. We will be doing that for Lando as soon as he is added to the game. It's something we'll be doing moving forward. I asked a number of you if you want to see that for Kersantan and Melga since they were recent. That seems to be something that you guys are interested in, so we will be doing that. So look at, I won't want to jam them up all at once, but we'll trickle them out over the coming days in this first week of Grand Arena as it makes sense to sprinkle in some other content. But thank you for watching. Be safe out there, everyone, and be excellent to each other. This is Still Plays Galaxy of Heroes.